Jordan was ringing the alarm for this a long time ago, and I'm sure you're aware of what's happening to him now. Uh, I am aware that something new is happening to him in the last couple days, but I have not caught up to it. He's getting in trouble. This right. is the most important part about it, is that Jordan has achieved uh, escape velocity. And he doesn't have, he doesn't need them anymore. And so this is an empty threat. And so this removing his license, you're gonna, not gonna take away his education, his degrees. You can't, you, if you say you're removing his license, well, I don't think he's seeing clients anymore. He's not really acting as a clinical psychologist anymore, is he? The legacy media uh, types are, they're done. They're so done. It's, and it's happened so fast. I notice among young people that the legacy media, the big magazines, the newspapers, the TV stations, the radio stations for that matter, all of whom had a monopoly on this kind of information flow are so dead to people under 30 that it's as if their death isn't even noticed. And that's fascinating. And and I've also been trying to figure out what I'm doing with the podcasts themselves, because that's really what I've been doing a lot of for the last four months. And I listened to this. I was interviewed by a Wall Street journalist last week, and I asked him what he liked about podcasts, because he listens to them a lot. And he said, I really like to see where they're going. And I thought, yeah, that's exactly it. Because in a legacy media interview, everything is scripted, and you're never talking to a person. You're talking to the corporation essentially and i'm not being cynical about that it had to be that way because bandwidth was so expensive but now you can sit down with someone and you can risk exploration of course that's what joe rogan has been doing so well for so many years you can risk exploration you can have two people having a genuine discussion about a complex issue and so they're they're engaging in dialectical thinking and if they're good at it they're modeling it so they can model high quality dialectical thinking and pull people along on an exploratory journey and make it permanent and that's completely revolutionary that's never been possible before and 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 the possibilities are um limitless and then sorry i'm gonna rant about this a bit because i i am so st continually staggered by this the next thing is you can take those conversations and you can chop them up into 30 second pieces, a minute long pieces, five minute long pieces, 20 minute long pieces, and each of those can find a specialized home that can attract millions of views. And so it's as if you could write a book and sell it by the sentence. It's, it's really something. And I can tell perfectly well when a podcast discussion is going well, and it's a dance, right? I mean, there's, there, there has to be this continual reciprocity, and that requires you to attend very carefully to your guest and to listen. I have some trouble with not interrupting because for a variety of reasons, but some of that's the technological lag produced by, the, by Zoom and Skype. It makes you a little less, uh, what, the dance is a little more awkward because the timing is off, but it, it's, it's really fun when it works. And it's working much of the time when I'm talking to my guests. It's really exciting. I have all sorts of people lined up. I'm so excited about it. I think that if in two hours you reveal your hand and everyone can see it, you reveal the weaknesses and strengths of your argument, you reveal the weaknesses and strengths of your character. You know, but, but in some sense you can, even if your character is flawed, like all of our characters are, you know, if you're engaged in something genuine, in a, in a genuine move forward, you're forgiven for that, right? It, it, if, if, you're, if you're actively rectifying your evident flaws during the discussion, people will forgive you for your flaws, but YouTube and podcast long form seems absolutely unforgiving of any <laughs> falsity, as far as I can tell. I mean, sometimes we do some editing. It, it, there, there's two conditions under which we'll edit. One is just to edit out some technical glitch. We also allow our guests um, the option of not having something they said broadcast if they believe they've made a factual error or addressed an argument um, in a misleading way. And that's a li little bit more of a moral quagmire, but our thought is that if we allow people that veto power to begin with, they're much more likely to be loose and to take risks in the exploration. And we've had to cut virtually nothing except 
I think, two factual errors of a few seconds. But it's so interesting because in the comments section, if we ever edit anything, there's skepticism right away. And so, and so that's another indication of how unforgiving the medium is with regards to falsity. I'm trying to get politicians on my podcast. Uh, senator Mike Lee, who's probably the most conservative senator in the United States, the, uh, I'm releasing a podcast with him this weekend, and I think he acquitted himself well. Um, and I'm hoping that I'm, I'm, I've been in contact with a large number of Democrats, and I'm hoping that they'll take the big leap because they can talk directly to their constituents. They can talk directly to the people who they're responsible to with no intermediation of bureaucracy, if they dare. Because like I said, I think you can make mistakes, but but, but if, if you're bargaining in good faith, the audience will forgive you for your, for your mistakes. So, but, but you're punished brutally if you're false. So, and I don't know about you, but I'm really attentive to the comments. I watch how people are responding. And, you know, if 10 people point out something, I'm still working on this proclivity to interrupt. But if 10 people point out something, I try to address it. My team tries to address it because, well, why not? You know, I mean, you're probably doing something wrong at some point. If enough people tell you, it's tricky.